This teaching is on our ministry. This is for born-again believers. If you are a born-again believer, then this is for you. The scriptures say that we are a light, not the light, because Jesus was the light. But the scriptures do say that we are a light. In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let your Christian walk be pure, and your faith be strong in the Lord. The religious leaders, they do their acts so men can glorify them. But we as Christians... We do our acts to glorify God, not to receive glory ourselves. And we do this on our daily walk, day by day. When we're at work, when we're at home, wherever we are, we are Christians 24-7. Either through the good times or the bad times, we need to let people see what Christianity is. If it's through bad times, let them see how we, how we go to the Lord and how He pulls us or sees us through whatever trials we might be going through. But your works are to be seen of men to glorify God, not to glorify yourself. Now your works are doing God's God's ministries. That's what your works are. Loving people and ministering to people. That's the works we have. And we should do it, like I said, not to glorify ourselves, but to glorify the Lord. You know, if you're a Christian... But nobody knows it. If you conceal it or hide it, then you're just useless to the Lord. The Lord can't use you. So we as Christians should not hide that or be ashamed that we're we're born again Christians, that we live for the Lord. Because if we do, like I just said, if we do, the Lord cannot use us. He cannot use you if you're that way. But we are a light. In John 8, 12, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So right here I'm just showing you that he is the light of the world. We shouldn't be walking in darkness. Once you give your life to the Lord, give your life, your heart to the Lord, then the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. And the Holy Spirit is God, is Jesus. So Jesus is the light of the world, and when he comes to live in us, then we're a light. Because he should shine through us. In Philippians chapter 2 verses 15 and 16. So that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Shining light, bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Now if you're a born again Christian, this is the way we should live. Clean, innocent lives. I know, now I know we make mistakes. We're Christians, but we do make mistakes. I'm not going to say we're going to be sinless. But when we do fall and we sin, we get right back on our feet, ask the Lord to forgive us, and go on. Because He will forgive us. Now, the forgiveness He gives is the forgiveness that's coming from the heart. Now, there's people out there who do the same thing over and over and over and pray for forgiveness, and there's no repentance. But the Lord knows that. He knows everyone's heart. He knows if you're truly... Uh, sorry for whatever sin you might have committed. So he looks at our hearts. But we need to walk in the light and not in the darkness anymore because we were once in the darkness, but now we're in the light. And we're among wicked people. Right here it says crooked and perverse. We're around crooked, uh, wicked people because the, the Bible says the world. The world is evil continually. So we're not going to have no big revival where we're going to change the world. That's not going to happen. But within our own lives, we can have revival and we can change those who are around, around us because they can see Jesus in us. John 1, 9, it says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now right here the Lord is saying, He lighteth every man. Every man is going to know who Jesus is. Right here it says it. He will show himself to every man. Now, if you're in Africa or wherever, the Lord is going to show himself to you. 
I don't know how. I, I, there's a lot of things I don't know. But I know right here the Lord says, I will enlighten every man. So he's saying, every man will know who I am. And they will have the chance to make a choice. Do I want to live for the Lord and have this light? Or do I want to stay in darkness? You know, the devil followers are more devoted to reaching people than we are. Because you have, you have them out there winning people to their gods left and right. And I see that the true born-again Christians were not as, uh, as great a servants as the servants of the devil. I mean, that's a shame, and I hate to see that. But we need more people to be out there not ashamed of the gospel, out there telling other people who Jesus is, how he is the light. Now, the devil will give you all kind of excuses why not to tell, tell other people about the Lord? I mean, he's full of excuses. He'll tell you you're too shy or, or you don't know enough of the Bible. I mean, he'll give you all kind of excuses why you can't do it and why you shouldn't do it. A lot of times we listen to him. Yes, born-again Christians, they do listen to the devil. Because if they're not out there witnessing, telling people about the Lord, and no matter what excuse they're using, it's from the devil. Because that's our ministry. This is what the Lord has told us to do. And I'm showing you right here through this teaching. The people that you that you don't tell, that come your way, that the Lord brings your way, and you don't tell them, you know, as Christians, that should bother us. It should bother us because we know where they're going. If we don't tell them about salvation and how to get saved, saved from, the, from hell, from being tormented forever and ever, you know, if we don't tell them that, uh, that should really bother us because we know the Word of God. We know it's real. And it should bother us that I didn't tell this person about the Lord. And, and you know what's going to happen to that person unless unless he gets the word from somebody else. But the Lord has has sent people our way so we can speak to them about Jesus. We should want to tell them about the many blessings that he gives us when you give your life to him. You know, he, there's blessings that we just take for granted like, like walking and seeing and hearing and just breathing. I mean, these are all blessings from the Lord. We just take for granted. But these are all blessings. And we need to tell people how good God is. You know, because we're in a battle. The devil doesn't want us to be in this battle because he, he's got a lot of souls right now that are following him. And I'm not talking about devil worshipers. I'm just telling, I'm talking about people who are not born again. They're not following the Lord. And he has many of them. So... We need to get serious about our walk with the Lord. We're soldiers out in the battlefield, and we should be doing this. But we don't, because many of us don't want to go on the battlefield. We're scared to, and we need to get away from that, because we've got the Jesus living in us. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit living in us to give us this strength that we need to tell people about the Lord and quit using all these excuses that the devil gives us. Acts thirteen, forty seven, it says, For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Right here the Lord is saying, He's I mean he's commanded us to be a light to the Gentiles. But it, uh we're supposed to be a light to him, a light to the world. That's what he says for us to be. In Romans two Verse 19, you are convinced that you, <clears throat> excuse me, you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind and a light for people who are lost in darkness. The Lord is, he's, again, he's telling us we're a guide for the blind. We're supposed to guide them to the Lord and say, look, and tell them about Jesus. Take, to get them out of that darkness. Because anyone not walking with the Lord, anyone who's not a Christian, a born-again Christian is walking in darkness. And we need to tell them. We need, Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And that's the way we need to be. We need, we need not to be ashamed of it. It's, it's, uh, that's, our, that's our life. Jesus is our life. And we should be proud of being children of God. But some of us is like, we want to... One thing people don't like and that's being rejected by other people so we 
we don't say anything because, oh, well, they're not going to want to hear that. And, and then they're not going to want us to come around because we're going to talk about the Lord. Well, you, that's being ashamed. And right here in, in Romans, it says not to be ashamed of your Lord. We need to quit listening to the devil and tell people about our Lord Jesus. Tell them about our Father. It's something we should be proud of. I am. I mean, the Lord has blessed me and blessed me and blessed me. He has been so good to me. And, and I just need to tell people about Him. Because I love Him so much, I need to tell people about Him. And plus, it does bother me. It does bother me if I know someone's going to hell. Now, I'm not judging these people. But the Bible does say you'll know them by their fruits. And if this person is not looking to Jesus at all for the way he walks in this world for his life, then then he has no fruits of being a born-again Christian. The fruits of a Christian, the Bible has a list of them. And we need to, we need to, we need to study our Bible so we can know, okay, this person, like I said, we're not judging. But we need to know what this person's lost. I need to tell them, talk to them about the Lord. We need to tell them. Because in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20, and I'm going to read out of the Living Bible because it's easier to understand. And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us the, this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plea, come back to God. Now 2 Corinthians chapter 5 there, verses 18 through 20, it plainly says that he, he uses us to reach the loss he's using us we we were brought back and what that means we were brought back to God what that means is uh, in John eleven twenty five, it says Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live so what he brought us back from he brought us back from the dead because you know we're dead until we, until we accept Jesus Jesus is the life. It says it over and over. He is the life. Until we receive Jesus, we don't have life. So we're dead. So he brought us back through Christ. Through Christ he did this. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So he's brought us back through Christ because he's the only name under heaven that we can come back to the Lord. It's through Jesus. It says it right there. It's through His name. We need Him to get right with the Lord. And also, in Ephesians 6, verses 19 and 20, And for me, that utterance may, give, may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador, ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So again, he's, he said we're ambassadors and he said it right here again. But he says we may open our mouth boldly. You know, we don't go out there like little wimps and, you know, talk about the Lord. We go with boldness because that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is, gives us this boldness to go out there and speak about our Lord. This is what he's given us to do. We are his ambassadors. So that's why this teaching I'm doing is to show Christians we need to get out there. I'm not saying we need to go door and door like, like Jehovah Witnesses do. But the Lord said as you're going through life, He will bring people our way. Whether it be friends or relatives, He will bring them our way. And we need to use that time to tell them about the Lord. Also in First Peter chapter 4, verse 11, it says, If any man speak... Let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Again, we, we the Lord, uses us to speak to the lost. He's not going to come down here like he did in, in the time of Jesus and directly speak to the lost people. 
Jesus is up in heaven now, but he's given us the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to speak to the lost people and say, you need the Lord. And like I said before, we need to take this serious, seriously because people are dying in sin every day. I mean, there, there is a hell. There really is a hell. And it is an unquenchable fire. And, it, and they will be tormented forever and ever. A torment that will never die. And that should bother us, bother us when we know people are heading that way. So we need to tell them about this hell. We don't want to. We don't want to scare them into becoming Christians, because because fear doesn't last very long. But if you can tell them how much the Lord loves you, loves us. Love is love is stronger than fear. Love can last forever. So we need to tell them. Look, this is what Jesus did for us. So we can't. We can't ignore our ministry. A lot of us want to, and we do, like I said. But we need to, we need to quit. We need to start working for the Lord. We need to start doing what He, what He saved us to do. He saved us so He can use us to reach the lost people. Like I said before, the Lord came down and did it Himself. But now He's given it to us to do. What we say, is in the name and in the authority of the Lord, because we have His words. We have His words to speak. To reach the lost people. In Acts 26.18. It says. To open their eyes. So they may turn from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan. Excuse me. And from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness. For their sins. And be given a place among God's people. Who are set apart. By faith in me. So what he's saying here is we need to turn them from the darkness to the light. From darkness to light. The devil is the darkness. Jesus is the light. Darkness is anything. Is anything that's not of God. If if our walk doesn't glorify the Lord, then it's in darkness. See, the way we walk, we should walk glorifying the Lord. Living the way He wants us to live. Darkness, and we're not talking about uh, a darkness like Star Wars or Darth Vader. I mean, that's not, that was a show. That's that's not darkness. Darkness is when you're not walking with the Lord. It, darkness is when you're walking, doing what you want to do or what your friends want you to do and not doing what the Lord wants you to do. That's what darkness is. And it says to turn you from the power of Satan to God. Now you say, well, Satan... He does have power. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, it says, You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commanders, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Right here it shows it, that, that the devil is the... Is the the King James says he's the prince of the air. And he is. Right now he has power in this uh, on the earth. The Lord's given it to him. He has the power. But he only has power for those who want to follow him. If you're a born again Christian, he has no power. He has no power over born again Christians. The only power he has over a born again Christian is the power that the, the Christian lets him have. Yes, what we let him have. Because the devil cannot make us. The devil cannot make us do anything. If we do it, it's because we want to do it. Read these verses. Read these verses. You know, when he says to be set apart, the Amish, those of you who know about the Amish, they've set themselves apart from the world. I mean, I, I believe that uh, if I wasn't a married man... And was single, I probably, I probably, be, I could probably become Amish, because they know how to set themselves away from the world, apart from the world, and that's what the Lord has told us to do. He says we're pilgrims. He says we're strangers. Over and over, many times, and the Amish, they, I mean, there's a lot of things they do that, you know, I don't believe they, you know. Uh, to me, they carry a little bit too far as far as not using electricity and stuff. I mean, the Lord has blessed us with electricity, believe me. It's a blessing. But yes, just like anything else, just like money. Money could be evil or money could be good. But this is the way we're supposed to set ourselves apart. 
we don't take we don't involve ourselves with the activities of the world because the activities of the world are not glorifying the Lord so we should set us uh, ourselves apart from them. And that's what it says. Who's, who are set apart by faith in me. We're not of the darkness anymore. We're now of the light. The light cannot live with the darkness. In Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11. Because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord. We work hard to persu- persuade others. God knows we are sincere and I hope you know this too. What does it say? We work hard. We're supposed to work hard at persuading others to turn their lives to the Lord. So over and over I've given you the scriptures that you can read for yourself. And you can see, hey, there's more to Christianity than me just going to church. Because, you know, it's not the pastor's job or the deacon's job to reach the lost people. I mean, they can do it also. But it's, that's not their responsibilities. The pastor's responsibilities is to take care of the born-again Christians, his flock. That's his responsibility. The deacon's respons- responsibilities are to help the pastor, especially if you're from a big church. The responsibility is ours to reach lost people and to get them to church, to get them to live for the Lord. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, if you're following the Spirit when you're witnessing to someone... Like with me, I mean, I don't have a program that I go by, a step-by-step thing. I I move totally by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has always led me on what to say to someone. And sometimes the Lord tells me to be gentle with someone, to, to, to lay it on them, but to lay it on them softly. You know, don't don't drop the hammer on it. But then sometimes He does. Sometimes He does tell me, I want you to drop the hammer on this person because I've already told this person several times. And... Now I want you to drop the hammer on them, and, and sometimes it's uh, telling them exactly like it is. Well, there's different ways of witnessing, but the, but the Holy Spirit will show you how to witness. He will give you the words, like I've said up above, that we are His oracles. He uses us to speak to people. We, would just, we just have to learn how to listen to the Lord and obey what He says. If He says, be gentle, be gentle. If He says, be hard, then we be hard. But it's Him. Programs are made of men. Steps 1, 2, 3 or steps A, B, C. This doesn't reach lost people. Because the Bible says they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. Not by a step-by-step program. They're drawn by the Holy Spirit. So when you're in the Holy Spirit, witnessing to someone, that's what's going to draw them. And for this to happen, it says in Acts 1.8. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now that's, I mean, he's given us the power. We don't have to worry about, well, what I'm going to say. Uh, no. Once it gets there, when the opportunity comes, just trust in the Lord that he's going to give you the words to say. Not only give you the words, but right here he says, I will give you the power to witness to this person. I will give you the strength. Stop believing the devil when he tells you you don't know what to say or you don't know enough of the Bible. Stop believing that and start believing what the Word of God says. The Word of God says right here, I will give you power to do this. You are my oracles. I'm using your mouth to speak to these people. You know, when you don't witness, you're giving victory to the devil. You're giving the victory to the devil because the Lord has given us a ministry to do we ignore it. We don't do it. Well, that doesn't that doesn't make the Lord very happy. But I guarantee you, it makes the devil very happy. He doesn't want people to know about Jesus. He doesn't want them to know uh, about salvation and being born again. So when we don't do our ministry, we're giving victory to the devil. I want you to think about that. In John 20, verses 21 and 22, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Again, he gives us the strength. He gives us what we need 
to witness to people. We just need to have faith that he's going to do this. You need to have faith in the scriptures that you read. And these scriptures I've given you, you need to believe them and go out there with boldness, like the Bible says, with boldness and say, hey, let me tell you about my father. Let me tell you about my savior and what he's done for me and what and what and where I'm not going now because of me giving my life to the Lord. Again, we don't do this by a program. We do it by the Holy Spirit. In Proverbs 11, verse 25, And he that watereth shall be watered him also himself. And watering means planting the seed. One person plants a seed, another comes and waters that seed. Another comes and, and waters that seed. And, and we keep watering it until it, it blossoms and, and the people receive the Lord. And sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. But the Lord right here is saying, when we do this, not only are we helping them, but it's helping us also. It makes, I know after I finish witnessing to someone, I, I, I feel good. I feel good because I've told them about my, my father. I've told them about my father, who I love very much. And that makes me feel good. And that just makes me uh, stronger because I'm, I'm using the boldness that the Lord has given me to tell people. He's, he's making me stronger when I let him use me. Also in Proverbs 11, verse 30, He that winneth souls is wise. The Lord's saying this. If you're out there doing your ministry, then you are very wise. You are very, very wise. Because the Lord is saying, is saying it right here. If you're out there and you're witnessing to people, the Lord loves it. He loves it. He loves it when His children are obeying Him. And our commandment, like I said, is to witness to the lost people. Is you know, And also on this winning souls where it says here, He's not saying it's our responsibility to win them over. It's just our responsibility to, to tell them. To tell them. Once we've told them, then we've done what we're supposed to do. But if they don't come and give their life to the Lord, don't feel like you're a failure. Because the Lord didn't tell us to get them saved. He just says to tell them about it. And then it's their choice whether they want it or not. So don't think, well, I failed because they didn't receive the Lord. No, that's not it. If you just tell them about the Lord, then you're doing your ministry. Because the Bible does say, broad is the way to hell and narrow is the way to heaven. So there's going to be a lot of people rejecting the Lord. So be ready to have people refuse to accept Jesus. Be ready because it's going to happen. Because broad is the, is the way to hell. It says it biblically. I mean, it, that's the way. The Lord's not saying it because he made it that way. Because he knows there's a lot of people who are not going to receive him. Who are not going to give their life to him. But we need to at least tell them. We need to at least tell them about the Father. Matthew 24 verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all of the world. For a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So again he's saying this gospel will be preached. Will be preached. And there's there's. They are uh, Christian brothers out there and sisters who are doing it. But not near enough because there's more brothers and sisters out there. But like I said, uh, they're not taking this ministry that the Lord has given us very serious. Luke fourteen twenty three, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. The Lord wants, the Lord, it is His will that everyone get saved it's not going to happen he already knows it but that's that's what he wants he wants us to be all to be saved but like i said he also said the world will be evil continually so there's no way all of us are going to make it to heaven in fact like i just said more are not going to make it to heaven than those who are but we're supposed to tell them ezekiel chapter 3 verses 7 17 through 19 it says, Son of man, which is us, we are the son of man. I have made thee a watchman, he's made us watchmen, unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked 
from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquities, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn from his wickedness, and he doesn't turn from his, his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquities, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So what the Lord is saying here is we need to warn the wicked. And the wicked is anybody who's not walking with the Lord. The wicked doesn't mean it's someone who steals, uh, kills, uh, what the world considers to be wicked. No, anything that's not of the Lord, if you're not walking with the Lord, if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, then you're wicked. And that's what the Bible is saying. Wicked is people who don't walk with the Lord. He says if we don't warn them of their wickedness, they're going to go to hell. And their blood is going to be on our hands. Read this. Read these verses I just read to you. But he does. But then he says, "But if we do warn them, and they still don't turn, well, at least their blood isn't on our hands anymore, because we told them about the Lord." When he says, "Thou hast delivered thy soul," he was just saying, "Now you're blameless. Now, you know, it's not because of you. This person's going to hell." And in Acts twenty twenty six, Paul. Paul said in Acts, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. And what Paul was saying here in Acts in the New Testament, he was referring back over here in the Old Testament in Ezekiel, what I just read from you. He said, I'm pure from the blood of all men. Meaning, saying, I did tell everyone that the Lord brought my way. I did tell them about my God. So he says, I'm pure from it because I did tell. I did go out there and I did witness for the Lord. So that's what Paul is saying here. And that's the way we need to that's the way we need to be. We like Paul. We need to be like Paul and tell people about the Lord so that way we can be pure from their blood. If they go to hell, it's not gonna be because we didn't tell them. Hope you understand what I'm saying. In Acts chapter eight, verse thirty and thirty one, and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So right here we have a, a Philip, a born-again believer, and he goes to this guy who's reading, and he says, Do you, know, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy says, No. Unless someone guide me, how can I understand this? So, right here is shown that we need to we need to be there, because there's people out there searching. They are sir. Everyone, everyone wants something to put their faith in, whether it be a god or or something. But everybody wants that. This guy right here was wanting it, and we should be ready. We should be there. I mean, right here it says Philip ran. Well, we, that's the way we should be. We should be anxious to tell other people about the Lord. In John chapter 1, verse 41, He first findeth his own brother Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So here we have a brother. What's the first thing he does? The first thing he does when he, when he finds Jesus, the Christ, is he goes and tells his family. He tells his brother. I mean, as, and I can understand that, but because that's pretty much what I did. When I gave my life to the Lord, the very first thing I did was I told my family about the Lord, and then I told my friends. And also in John one forty five, it says Philip found Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So it's, again, here's. <clears throat> Philip, he finds his brother and says, Hey, I found him. I found the Lord. Again, I'm using these verses to show you that we need to do the same thing. We need to go and tell. And especially, we should tell our family first because that should be the first ones that hit us to, to, to reveal the truth to them and so they can see the light and so they can cut to the place where you got. Whatever brought you to the Lord, then that's what you need to tell them. You know, if if uh, 
the Bible, if the devil says, oh, you don't know enough of the Bible to, to witness to somebody, that's a lie. That's a lie. What got you there, what got you living for the Lord, you can use exactly what that was to tell someone else. Well, this is what happened to me. And tell them. And that might be just enough for them to turn their life over to the Lord just like it was you. You know, we don't need to know the whole Bible before we start witnessing. We don't, we don't you know, we'll never know the whole Bible. The Bible has, has uh, truth in it that we'll, we can study and study and study and we'll never get everything the Lord has in there for us. So if you're waiting until you learn what the Bible says, well, it's going to be a, a very long, long, we'll, we'll be gone by the time you learn what's all in there. So don't think you need to learn everything that's in the Bible before you can witness. That's a lie from the devil. And quit listening to him. John 3.20 All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. You know, and people don't, uh, there's a lot of people who don't want to hear about the light. There's a lot of people who don't want to know about Jesus because they, they, uh, well, what it says here, that's the light and if you show them the light the light's going to be is going to shine on their sins and they're going to they're not going to like that cuz uh right now you know they're doing their own thing and and they don't want to hear the truth they don't want to know the truth cuz they like what they're doing the light will expose what what evil they have in their life you need we need to tell them I, i'm going to give you an example uh, you're going down say you're over there by the grand canyon and say there is a bridge that crosses the Grand Canyon. Okay, and you come to it, and uh, the bridge is out. And say it's dark already. The bridge is out, there's no lights, and the, and you see it. So what you're going to do, you're going to come up a little ways from the road, and you're going to stop whoever's going that way. And you're going to tell them, hey, the bridge is out, don't go that way. Now it's up to the person if they want to continue going that way. But at least you've warned them. Or what's up ahead. They go on up ahead. The bridge is out. They can't see that it's out. And, and it's over the Grand Canyon they're going. Okay. That's about what it's like. We we know what's ahead, up ahead. We know what we've been saved from. So now we need to tell others. And then it's up to them. Whether they want to continue going down that road or not. And the way we do this. Like I said. Is by walking in the spirit. Let the spirit lead you. On what to tell people. And like I said before, there's going to be people that reject it. So just, you know, get ready for that. And Luke 10, verse 16, Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message, message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. These are pretty strong words right here. I mean, the Lord is saying, if they reject you, then they're rejecting me, Jesus. And if they're re rejecting me, Jesus, then they're rejecting God. Please read these scriptures. I mean, the scriptures, read them. You need to read them. I can't point it out enough that you need to read the scriptures. And when they reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Jesus. And they're rejecting Jesus. They're rejecting God. And then... Well, we know what happens from there. Proverbs twenty-eight twenty-six: He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. People out there, well, I think I'm going to heaven because blah, 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 blah. Well, unless they say I'm going to heaven because I've given my heart to the Lord, they're not going to make it. If they say things like, well, I'm, I'm a good person, well, Titus 3, 5 says, it don't matter how good you are. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, you're not making it. If they say, well, my good outweighs my bad, sorry. The Lord didn't say if your good outweighs your bad, he was going to let you go to heaven. So he that trusts is in his own heart, meaning if, he, if he's trusting on what he thinks that's going to get him to heaven, is a fool. He that walks wisely is the one that's going to be delivered. And we, the ones who are walking wisely are the ones who accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And they put Him in their heart and they start living for Him. That's wise. But if you're going by what you think and it's not biblical, if you're going by what you think, the Lord, the Lord is saying you're a fool. 
I'm just I'm reading you the words of God here, okay? Now when that happens, when people reject it, Matthew's chapter ten, verse fourteen, and and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. He's saying if if they reject you, if they're rejecting the Lord, then leave the house. Just leave whoever you it don't have to be a house, it could be the person. If they reject you, it says to, to just turn away and shake off the dust off your feet. It's saying just clean yourself off and then go on to the next person or the next house. Acts 18.6 It says, But when the Jews opposed him and blasphemed, hurling abuses at Jesus, Paul shook off the dust from his robe and said, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am innocent. From now on I will preach to the Gentiles. So what Paul is saying here is what he what he said earlier. He, he shook the dust off of him and he went on to, to preach to somebody else. And he says, your blood is on your own hands. Your blood is on your own head. Which we've talked about already. But when they reject you and they say they don't want to hear it or they're not ready or whatever, well, you just turn away, you know, dust yourself off and go to the next person. And But, uh, you know, when they say they're not ready, you know, what you need to tell them, one thing you need to tell them is, look, you're, you're not promised tomorrow. When you say you're not ready, you're gambling with your life that you're going to be here at a time when you might be ready. But if you walk out this door, you know, a Mack truck can run over you or, or an accident can, can happen and, and your time has come and gone. So when you're using this time to think about it, you're gambling with your life. Accept him now. Now is the time because now is the time he's speaking to you. Because when you keep putting it off and putting it off, well, you know, we don't know when our time is coming. And if we keep putting it off and our time comes then our decision was we rejected him. Matthew 10.33 But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This is what what we said earlier. If you reject him, if you deny, deny him now, he's going to deny you by the Father in heaven. And one last verse I want to give you is Romans 10.14 how then shall they come unto him whom they have not heard or believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So right here is just shown. These people need a preacher. They need someone to witness to them. And it's not just the preacher's job like I've told you before. It's our job. It is our responsibility. It is our ministry to do. It's to tell people about the Lord. I pray that you'll take this seriously. I pray that you'll listen to this tape again and receive what the Lord has to say here in this teaching. We do have a ministry, every one of us. We need to do it and quit listening to the devil.